The last time I saw you on stage, it was for the anniversary of Irreligious. Uh -huh. uh, how was the feeling on stage during that tour? It was uh, very good. We had um, second doubts because uh, we are a band that um, obviously we have a nowadays a history a heritage as well. And also, um, you know, those albums uh, were very, they turned out to be very important for our fans, for the, for the metal scene back then. Um, in Europe, but we always try to focus in the future. Um, I will hate to just be like a tribute band playing that. But it was um, the right occasion, it was 20 years after Irreligious um, was out. Uh, we were always touring, but we had the time you know, to make a special set for the fans. And the first time we tried it was in um, Italia, in Italy. And um, we had to test if it was genuine, you know. And it was. People were very. It was a very packed show, and people were like um, the new fans were listening to a lot of the songs for the first time, and the older fans were like in a kind of spell or trance, and so were we. So that um, gig in Italy was very important. That we thought it was really genuine, and um, that um, we felt really good playing not only the religious but also uh, sometimes we threw in all the wolf art so um, I think the highlight for this tour was definitely the show in Lisbon our hometown uh, it was a big place and we played three full albums wolf art irreligious and extinct and um, we recorded it on DVD so it's coming out um, in June uh, via Napalm Records and it's also like a document for all these years of touring that sometimes we are so involved in the future, future albums, you know, tours, that um, sometimes we forget that it's also an history to be celebrated. So it was under this view that we did um, this um, more um, retro, um, vintage um, shows. Yeah. Uh, no, you are back on tour with Cradle of Filth. Uh, it's not the first time you tour with them. Uh, how did this happen again? Well, um, you know, people think that musicians are very focused in business, you know, and that's what um, comes uh, also for, for the outside. But I have to say that this tour, this idea of this tour started uh, just because me and Danny felt uh, we are friends since uh, 1994. So we've toured many times together, as you said. We share many stages together, many occasions, you know, good occasions, bad occasions. So we have a history between us and Cradle of Filth, so um, they were uh, releasing Cryptoriana and we were um, just trading emails because also we have a biography from Moonspell Out and uh, Danny wrote the foreword, the preface, so there was always stuff happening between us and we said why don't we go on tour, so we agreed between us that we were going on tour, in the meanwhile we released 1755 which helped a, a lot also to, for this tour to um, become um, something also interesting for the promoters etc and then we gave it to the business people and here we are on tour and it's great because we are friends the bands um, the package is uh, really strong uh, musically I think we can um, energize and uh, motivate each other uh, we're gonna have a really long year both bands um, Cradle and, and Moonspell we're gonna to tour up to the end of the year like in a world tour so I think um, for the first tour of uh, 2018 it's been s s such an awesome uh, atmosphere and I'm glad that me and Dan we keep in touch so we can make uh, things happen for for the bands and especially the fans they really love the combination yeah. <laughs> As you told us, you have a new album out, uh, 1755. Mm -hmm. uh, how was the writing session for the, this album? How do you say it in French, 1755? 1755. Ah, that's easy. 1755. Mm -hmm. um, well, we were not planning making a new album, to be honest. We were focused on touring and on the DVD. 
But then um, Napalm started entertaining the idea of having um, like a, a bonus with some songs or some uh, stuff we had uh, like from the past sessions and we really never, we keep stuff but normally we, if we keep some stuff it's for working into a new album because the idea is not complete so we're not going to make a song. So I, s I had this um, concept about the Lisbon Earthquake in my head for quite a while so I thought this could be uh, a good chance you know to do an album in Portuguese about an historical event which I've studied already in the past and that I was ready to make a, a concept out of it so we made uh, four songs and immediately when we finished the four songs we said we're not going to do an EP we're going to make an album because musically and lyrically this has definitely a lot of thread a lot of um, you know a bigger path to be walked so that's how uh, 1755 was born and it was very motivating because especially we had Extinct, a very different album and also we had the, the 25 year celebration as a band at the 20 years of, um, of um, Irreligious so we were feeling to do something completely not new but something um, fresh for us and uh, singing in Portuguese about the earthquake that was the thing we wanted to do. It was very um, even fast to do and to um, record. We were very inspired. Each song uh, turned out to be another song and another song. So it was harder to stop, <laughs> you know, uh, because this could have been even a larger album if we had um, the time. And for us it felt really good. We didn't know what the fans would think. Actually, we never know. But um, the th being in Portuguese, etc. But we got a huge response. Uh, in the end, and it seems like um, we were in the same, you know, page as our fans. That even they loved extinct. They loved to hear mm -hmm. something completely, you know, out of the ordinary for Moonspell. I have the impression, uh, in my own impression, I think it's a, a, a kind of new era for the band. You know, a kind of new chapter. And uh, I think that maybe I'm not sure. I ask you the question, if the, the fact that you wrote your lyrics in Portuguese, uh, it had uh, an influence on the music? Yeah, it's it's always a new chapter for the band. Maybe this is the end <laughs> chapter. But because we have already, you know, from what we were expecting, a very large live as a band, uh, obviously we still feel creative and we still have this response from the fans that, yeah, we are a, a creative band. So, um, and I think that's the most important in being in a band, when you are like, um, the rest of the stuff you deal with, touring, getting money, getting paid or not, you know, it's the business. But I think the core of music is really, if you can do something that um, you listen and say, well, I'm happy with this and I feel it's creative and not repetitive. So, um, I feel um, when we finished 1755, I feel that probably not a new era, because we're already writing the follow-up to Extinct and that's going to be a, a different album from 1755, it's going to be in English again but um, I don't see 1755 like a door that closed, it's more of an open window because we can definitely use this style that we discover now to tell about historical events in Portugal which is one of our biggest passions, it's the Portuguese history and it's very long, very eventful you know, very forgotten sometimes, you know, when you see a king in a, like um, a Portuguese king in a UK series, they're all old, you know, and they're all decadent and they're dying of syphilis. So, um, and there's more to that. So as a band, we also have this job as a Portuguese band, uh, also to let more people know about our culture. And we always did that with songs of Opium, Alma Mater, um, etc. Uh, and now with 17, um, 55 so I think probably in the future years if we find a good enough subject in the Portuguese history we'll probably do another album in Portuguese it's not going to be the next one but um, you never know I think that was really for me the best value of 1755 uh, Moonspell doing something different and telling the story um, in a way that we are very happy because everything revolves about around the earthquake the consequences, the social, the religious, changing the face of Portugal. There's my main inspiration was um, um, the poem of 
um, the disaster of Lisbon by Voltaire. So it's something very deep and complex and um, and also very interesting, you know. I know people love Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, um, which is something I never read myself. It's one of my uh, probably flaws. But I was reading something else and in real history you find stuff that it's so much more passionate and, and true and human than just, you know, dragons and Middle Earth, yeah. This year it's also uh, the celebration, it's the anniversary of two of your albums, uh, Sin Pecado mm -hmm. and also the album uh, The Monarch of yep. The Monarch. Uh, will you do something special for with these well. two ones? Because in my opinion they are very uh, different from Moonspells. Yeah, we going to. Um, we always, you know, it's complicated because nowadays, because we started in the 90s every year an album will make 20 yeah. years because we were very prolific um, back then. As far as Demonarch goes, the, uh, the goal was just to make that album and probably use that persona to do something else more underground, more black. And I did some stuff in Portugal more experimental with uh, spoken word but it wasn't um, you know, really promoted, it was just something for me and for a couple of uh, friends. and. Um, so I don't think we will touch that. But as far as him goes, um, unfortunately we don't have the time to prepare like a scene tour or um, you know a special show because we're going to be touring, like I said, up to the end of 2018. So what we want to do is in our headliner tours that will now um, start happening after we um, do this support tour with Cradle, we will um, for sure uh, practice and put uh, a few songs from uh, Sin. We still have to place them because 1755 is so violent and the um, scene is so moody and melodic. But I'm um, trying and I'm convincing the band as well that we relearn songs like Mute, for instance, I think it's a beautiful song, um, Let the Children Come to Me. It was just, just a very different album, Divider, our first album that divided the fans. But in retrospect, after 20 years, the fans really love it. And, um, and they, you know, they just um, want to listen to it live. So even though we don't have the time and we can promise a full tour like we did for Irreligious, for sure there will be sing songs in our in our set lists after this tour yeah. okay um so you have many projects for this year uh, touring a lot yeah touring a lot only touring no no uh, no writing i i think well um, you can do a lot of stuff, you know, sometimes musicians are on tour and uh, even though it's stressful and day to day it's, it's hard because those are long tours and uh, the goal is to keep, you know, in shape to deliver every night. Uh, I always do a lot of other stuff, definitely. Uh, for, as far as Municipal is concerned, now we are uh, going to wrap this tour in uh, Sweden in March. Then we come back home to do more, to more shows in Portugal. Then we go to Russia, and then we came back home, you know, like a globe trotter, <laughs> uh, to do more shows in Portugal, and then we go on a Latin America tour to Brazil, um, Colombia, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, and I hope I'm not forgetting um, anyone. <laughs> um, and then we go on summer festivals. You know, it's not a very eventful. Um, season for us because the festivals are all mainly booked when we were um, doing the album we were doing a couple 
and um, and then we go to um, North America with the Dark Tranquility team, Amorphis, Omnium Gatherum. It's going to be a really big European package. It's a really good build. People are very excited about it over there in the States. And then we probably still go to um, Japan and Australia before the end of the year. So it's a lot of stuff. As far as writing goes, yeah, I can write anywhere. And also we having a lot of stuff uh, coming out, like a new edition of um, Wolf Art that it's totally sold out on vinyl. We have our own label called Alma Mata Records, which just released my book uh, of poetry in English right now. We're going to release uh, the biography of Moonspell. So there was a, there will be a lot of stuff. But I think for the fans, what matters the most is the DVD. It's going to be a triple DVD, well, three shows, and a small documentary about uh, Moonspell and how we, you know, live this life in Portugal, which is quite funny to watch. <laughs> I had to say. <laughs> to thank you for the interview um, to say to the French fans you know to come to the shows we are really excited of being in France because um, not only because of the people but because of the vin you know and um, and everything the food and everything here is it reminds me more of home you know it's more domestic it's more family related so we're quite happy of um, um, touring here and we'll, we'll be around in um, a lot of dates and um, just support Moonspell and Portuguese Metal and uh, Merci Pia, I'll be in too. Mm -hmm.